Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to Mr. M's class for Upper Bound and for 3D printing. And today I wanted to talk about this conception. Um, and before I show you the reality, I want to talk about some misconceptions. Hey, Mr. Montague, I got on Tinkercad, I got on some design software, and I hit the print button, nothing happened. Or I bought a 3D printer and it doesn't print. The thing with 3D printing is that unless you have a direct interface from your design software to your printer, you have to do a conversion process. And it's perfectly okay to misunderstand this. It's like when you know kids your age have to help their parents with their phones or with the TV or the cable box. I'm 42 and I still have to help out people older than me with technology. It's okay, don't get offended. We'll be all right. So what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this party rolling with Tinkercad. And I'm gonna explain Tinkercad a different way as well as get everybody up to par on what we're going to be doing. So first off, let me share my screen. And I'm going to start off with my test house. Test house is running on the machine right now off to my left. And I wanted to show you guys the Tinkercad interface when you go back. Notice it says Tinker this and download. There is nowhere to hit a print button anywhere. So I want to hit Tinker. You can share it to classroom and we can turn it in. And that's how we're going to turn and work going forward. So there's my design. As you look at the Tinkercad menu, keep in mind that Tinkercad is a web-based program, meaning that it's designed to sit on the internet, stay on the internet, not get downloaded to your computer. When you are getting ready to share your designs, you can upgrade your designs from Tinkercad to Fusion 360 and get more complicated. You can send it straight to Google Classroom, my mini factory, all these other place, places or services or apps that can print. Next, export. When you hit export, you either can do it for OBJ, STL, or GILT, which is all 3D printing, or SVG straight for laser cutting. If you own any of these printers and they connect directly to your laptop, it'll automatically kick up. If as long as you're on the same network and you have a related IP address, that's the only way to directly print. And that's fine. However, um, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it here. On my personal laptop, um, you need permission to install programs on the upward bound laptops. So what I'm going to do is export my test house. Actually, I want to print something else. So we're not going to print the test house. We are going to print my time box. My time box was designed to be a half hour print that shows you what a 3D printer is capable of. So to export it and print it, I'm going to Click export STL. It's going to download to my computer. If you see the little blue C symbol next to it, that's Ultimaker Cura. So I'm going to click on it. It's going to pull up. This is the software. It's loading the machine. I only have the sun loop loaded. So what I'm going to do. I apologize again, I am not bored of this sleep apnea. Um, I'm going to show you how Ultimate Cura works. You can use the, the folder to import a file. You click where it says Sunloot, and these are all your preset printers. You have to manually preset them yourself. With um, Ultimate Cura, you can see it in all three, left, right, up, down, and, and almost invisible. So what I'm going to do is walk you through how this works. If you already have standard quality set, perfectly fine, you hit slice. After you hit slice, 
you save the disk. If you have a printer that's connected through OctoPrint or any of the other services, you can directly print. Our office manager, the, the ones we have downstairs, I went back to sharing my screen really quick. Um, I had a minor interruption for business purposes. So again, Ultimate Cure is free. You go to ultimaker.com. You don't have to sign up or buy their $38,000 Super 3D printer. It's not necessary. All you want is their free, their free slicing software. There are multiple slicing programs on the, on the market. Prusa makes a great slicer. I'm stuck in what Ultimate Cure because it hasn't steered me wrong. And there's multiple things that you can do to make your life easier, Ultimate Cure. Um, for example, as we get into more advanced features later on, I'll be posting videos to this YouTube um, playlist that way you can watch from other things. Every company makes their own filament and some filaments work better or work worse with whatever printer you're using. Always look for your manufacturer recommended filaments. I know I'm jumping around, but again, I want to go back to Ultimaker. And what I've done is that I've switched my design interface to select the Ultimaker, I mean the MakerBot replicator that's available at the UNO library. So what you're noticing is that the bed itself is only 20 by 20 by 20. This is a tiny 3D print bed. It's not the exact size, but it doesn't have a lot of space. My design is only 20 by 20 by 20, but the bed itself is small. One of the things that people do is that they over um, design things do not fit on their bed and you get this. When you get this shady yellow line, of course you can obviously see that it doesn't fit on a print bed, but it comes down to you knowing what the limitations of your, your printer are. And when you get to larger scale designs, it will become a process of breaking your design up into multiple pieces. And that's something you handle in Tinkercad or your design software. Your slicer, only job it does is translating your design to G-code, which all 3D printers use. So again, this is just an explanation video real quick to make your life easier. So thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.